Hi and welcome, I'm Nadine Piet from Healthy You, Healthy Love. I'm a coach for smart, savvy women just like you who are looking for sexy, united love. And before I continue, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel, hit that bell button. You can also follow me on Instagram at Nadine Piet. And I also would love to hear from you, so please comment below and let me know how this topic helps you or please share it with a friend in need. So what is this powerful ingredient? Now this ingredient is somewhat of a bonding ingredient because without it, a relationship has very little to succeed. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you may have seen another video that I created and I talk about the number one ingredient for a healthy relationship, which is conflict. And I'll have the link in the description for that for you. But this is not what I'm talking about today exactly, even though both of these things work really well together. So what is it? Well, it is friendship. So many people go into relationships without actually having any friendship in place or they're not in the process of building a friendship. They don't even have the skills to do so. So why does this happen? Well, I'm going to get into that in a moment, but I want to share first is that friendship trumps so many things. I talk about liking someone versus loving someone. It's very hard to truly authentically love someone if you don't like them and friendship is what is required to actually like someone. If you're not friends, then how can you actually truly like each other? How on earth can you have a devoted, deep, intimate relationship if you don't treat each other with love and kindness? So I'm about to reveal the key reasons why friendship is so darn important and why also people don't actually focus on this when they're in the early stages of dating or also in a relationship. Number one is attraction and intense desire does not equal or equate to friendship. Just because you're attracted to someone, just because you have strong feelings for someone, this doesn't mean that there's a true friendship that has been developing over time. Because we can really feel that we love someone or that we're obsessed with someone, but we actually don't really have anything. There's no solidness or, or real care, kindness, support, and consideration between those two people. So what's extremely important, and many people say, no, I've got to have chemistry. Well, you can still have chemistry. There's nothing better than friendship chemistry because that is what keeps the desire and passion alive. Now this is not about just being friends and you know in the friend zone, this is not what I'm talking about. You can still desire someone passionately and still be friends and that's what I want for you. I want you to understand and really focus on meeting someone that you are both attracted to and also you have a really strong friendship with, that you work together as a team, which I'll go into in detail in a little moment. The next point is a question. So why is it that we don't focus on friendship first? Well, a lot of the time our modeling from our parents really plays into that. If you grew up with two parents who really weren't friends and didn't really show a lot of care and consideration and sort of respect respectful, mindful behavior towards each other, then you didn't actually see that. Now you may have learned by viewing such a relationship that that's not what you want, but maybe there are some subconscious beliefs going on for you that still sees you attracted to a relationship that it has some level of disconnect, that isn't what you uh, consider kind and mindful and united. So that's very important to realize that perhaps some old conditioning is really playing into the fact that you're not turned on or driven to actually create a deep bond through friendship. Also, another reason why people don't value friendship as much or know how to build friendship because there's often a lot of pressure in society to be in a relationship. So many people have like a goal list from a very young age of what a successful life looks like. And if being in a relationship and being loved and having a family was one of their priorities, which for many people it is, then sometimes that desire or that goal overshadows or 
takes over the actual requirements or the traits that are needed for a healthy relationship to actually have that family and that deeper connection that is healthy and loving and supportive that can build over time and get stronger and stronger. It's very important to understand that being single versus being in an unhealthy relationship is something that we really need to look at in society because you are not a failure if you're not in a relationship. You are not a failure if you're single. I would rather be single than in an unhealthy relationship. Everybody knows that about me. There are so many people in this world that are in relationships for the sake of just being in a relationship that they're not living their authentic self. They're caught up in this dramatic, unhealthy, um, disconnected union with someone that is actually not united. So that's really important to not feel any societal pressure to stay with someone and be with someone. Even like in your social setting of friendships, you know, that you don't want to be seen as a failure if you're not in a relationship or if you leave a relationship. It's very important to not buy into that kind of pressure and that kind of conditioning because it does not bring you joy. It brings pain. It brings misery. And I don't want that for you. So the next point highlights what is required or what kind of mindset is needed to be in a true friendship partnership that is also romantic, which is me versus we. So if you're very me, me, me orientated or if your partner or someone you've recently started dating has a tendency to be very self focus. Now we all have some level of self-focus, but when someone is in a relationship with someone who isn't meeting them halfway or very rarely, rarely does, then you'll find that you're in a very much a me relationship with that person. That person doesn't understand the we. And that also may be you. Maybe you struggle with sharing and caring. Maybe you have some emotional blocks that sort of stops creating a friendship with someone because you're so worried about being hurt that friendship doesn't show up so much. Angst does. Insecurity, conflict shows up more than actually building friendship. Ego shows up more than friendship. To have a true friendship with someone, you need to think as a team, as a we, and it's very important to have your core values aligned so that you can work together and honor those values. Because when your needs take over, your neediness needs, the desperate need to be loved, desperate need for attention, those kind of things, or desperate need to be seen as, as a success, whatever that means in your life, if it's related to relationships, then we can start lying to ourselves and we can focus on the, the things that don't necessarily bring joy and connection into a relationship. So so it's very important to get over our ego, to start thinking as a we, and it's important to find a partner that can do partnership with you, who can work together with you to create growth and harmony and connection. My next point is look for the feeling of safety. Feel into your body. Do you feel safe with this person emotionally? If you don't feel safe with them emotionally, then you probably don't have a friendship because true friends, people who truly care for each other, you don't feel unsafe. You're not worried about being abused. You're not worried about your feelings being rejected. You're not worried about a conflict being unresolved. You're not worried about someone dismissing or dissing your values and what's important to you. So, a true friendship requires give and take from both sides. So my encouragement to you is to really check into your body. Do you feel safe? Do you feel confident that this person has your back and you have their back? Is there a nice level of give and take? Do you feel safe to express yourself with confidence? Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have conflict at all. It's a natural part of any relationship. It's how you deal with conflict that allows for that sense of safety and a real bonding and friendship to take place, which allows for lots of yumminess. Now, there's something I'd love to share with you that's gonna really help you with this is my free gift called Word Poison. It is fabulous to know how to navigate a conflict in a relationship and to feel that sense of safety because we can all be triggered from time to time. So Word Poison um, has 16 words and phrases to avoid using to keep harmony in the relationship. So check out that link right below and that's a free gift I'd love to share with you. Now my next point is 
relying too much on superficial attraction? Do you place too much emphasis in the superficial stuff? It can be looks, money, a social scene, dress, it could be a number of things. So do you perhaps find yourself attracted to people and hooked to people on a superficial level when deep down you know there's no true depth? So just be mindful when you're dating and you're selecting partners that you're not so much hooked to the superficial attraction. Next is common interests or common values. Now I've mentioned values a few times and now I wanna talk about interests. Now you do not have to have the same interests or hobbies as somebody to have a healthy relationship. Because when people come together from a true friendship, they will support each other's interests and sometimes introduce some new things to each other. So it doesn't mean that you both have to love cycling or you both have to love history or architecture or I don't know, rock climbing in order to have a healthy relationship. And yet your values need to be aligned. So everyone has different core values. And yet if you want to have a healthy relationship with someone, you have to have aligned core values when it comes to intimacy and a relationship. So for you, it's very important to write down what those core values are so that you can actually see if you match. So just because you seem to have the same values on paper, it doesn't mean that you live by those values or express those values in the same kind of way. So just get a little clear about that and that will help you make decisions because when we're clear of our values, we can then build a relationship. We can make clear decisions on what is important to us. If we're not really sure about what we value or they're kind of like unclear you've kind of got them you know floating around your psyche but you actually haven't written them down you're not clear about what they really are then it's very easy to get pulled into relationships that don't honor them because you haven't made them an absolute priority so when you make your values a priority and you live by them you honor them then your needs and your ego and your insecurities and your fear of being alone and your fear of you know being abandoned they won't show up so much because you'll be living by your values. Now let's talk about drama. From time to time, all relationships can experience a little bit of drama. We can get triggered. It doesn't matter how evolved we are, how much coaching we've had or therapy we've had, from time to time, things can trigger us. And that can come up as a little dramatic from time to time. However, some people live in a state of drama. They're always having a problem with someone. They're always having a problem with you. They're never happy. They're never happy with their boss, other friends, their family family, their dog, or maybe that's the only thing that makes them happy is their pet. That kind of language is something to be aware of. And it's very important to be mindful that, you know, you're not dating someone or you're not someone who seems to love drama because that is not true friendship and partnership. Sure, supporting someone, helping boost someone up when they're feeling insecure and down, that is all part of a great friendship and partnership. But when that is really prevalent all the time, that it's impacting your relationship, it's impacting your everyday joy and constantly things are showing up, massive roadblocks or you know bumps in the road, then it's time to really assess, is this a friendship or is someone really codependent or is someone highly dependent on you to make them feel happy? Are they relying on you too much to make their life better? So you need to really be mindful whether there's a true friendship there or something else is actually going on that isn't healthy. True friendship also requires honesty and sometimes a little bit of tough love. If you're in an honest and open relationship with the friendship base that creates that bonding I was talking about, then sometimes we need to have a little bit of humility and be open to a little bit of tough love from time to time because friendships are about learning and growing. That's what they are. All relationships are about. Truly healthy relationships require growth, humility, uh, self-reflection, uh, vulnerability. So don't be scared of that honesty and a little bit of tough love. Encourage it and invite it into your life so you can be your best self, that your relationship helps you be more connected, more loving, more open-hearted. Now, true friendship has a foundation of trust. So if you wanna be in a healthy, romantic, sexy relationship, 
then there needs to be a level of trust. You trust that that person is going to be good and kind to you. You trust that that person has the similar vision or same vision for you, that you're committed to each other to create that relationship together. You trust that you can be honest with each other, which is what I just mentioned before. You trust that they can give as much as they take. You trust that when you fall, sometimes they are there to support you. You trust that you can express yourself and not feel shamed, blamed, humiliated, and so forth. There's a level of understanding and belief in each other that feels safe and very, very beautiful. Now, my last point is about healthy boundaries. Now, in my program, Unlock His Heart, I talk a lot about how to express your boundaries, how to overcome fears. In Unlock His Heart, I talk a lot about fear clashes. One person has a set of fears, another person has another set of fears, and they are actually sort of charging each other's fears. They're triggering each other's sort of weaknesses and that creates this bigger disconnect. Well, with healthy boundaries, communicating what's important to you, that kind of disconnect, that charge is massively decreased. Those fears can get dissolved. And a lot of people don't express what they value. They don't express their healthy, mindful boundaries because they're really scared of being rejected and for someone to not honor what they're sharing. And in that mindset of we versus me, then honoring someone's boundaries is critical. Now, you don't always have to believe in someone's boundaries, meaning maybe those boundaries are set because someone has really, you know, big fears and insecurities that haven't been properly looked at. And when you discuss it and pull it apart, you'll find that there is no boundary to put in place because it was miscommunication or it was un a fear that was not necessarily grounded in any real truth. And then you can dissolve those fears and issues and then those boundaries no longer need to be there. But you need to be open enough to talk about what you really value, which I mentioned before, and what your boundaries are, what does and doesn't feel good. And this is really critical. If you're going to express your needs and values in a, in a relationship, it's important that you learn how to do so from a place of grace and clarity and kindness. As soon as you shame and blame and make someone wrong using wronging language, then you actually create an immediate defense with the other person. They wanna go head to head with you because often the ego will show up to defend itself because it doesn't wanna feel any less. So when you do express what you need, value, want, and so forth, what makes you feel safe, those boundaries, it's very important to share it in a way that is received, and which means that you need to share it from a gentle, heartfelt place, not a heady, controlling, um, demanding, aggressive, belittling kind of way. It's critical to learn how to use your language with grace, graceful language, which I go into great detail in Unlock His Heart. So please check out the link to that program right below. It's a game changer. Now, that's all I have for you today. They are the tips that you need to know and cultivate in order to have that beautiful friendship. Now, before you go, of course, please subscribe, hit that bell button to get notified of my next hot topic. And also please comment below. I want to hear about your experience with friendship in relationships, whether it's something that you've paid a lot of attention to and really, really try to cultivate in a relationship, or is it something that you've actually overlooked because you've been focusing on something else. So please comment below and also please share this with a friend who may be in need. They may be in an unhealthy relationship. They may choose men that aren't great for them. They may also have a lot of conflict in their connections. So this video would be for them. So please share this with them. And if you haven't yet, please check me out at Instagram, also Facebook. Instagram is Nadine Piet. Um, I'm a little bit more active there these days. So once again, it's an absolute honor to have you here with me and I look forward to seeing you at my next video.